Yeah, so the rogue and the wizard are both so solid in their base classes and they have pieces that all need to be there. And with this UA, we wanted to not force anything. Uh, we, we didn't want to put in replacements or enhancements just because we could. Yeah. We really wanted to be targeted. Uh, and because of that approach, uh, the wizard and the rogue got sort of just enough. <laughs> Uh, you know, wizard, wizards are now going to have some versatility with their cantrips. Right. There were a few spells that we added, particularly to help the uh, divination uh, subclass, but all wizards are going to be happy uh, to get them uh, if given certain character concepts. The rogue, uh, they got one, but it's a biggie. Yeah. Uh, it is the ability to use their cunning action to aim. Uh, thereby giving themselves advantage on their next attack roll on the same turn. The trade-off, though, is they have to give up all of their movement that turn. They yeah. can't have moved before using it, and as soon as they use it, their speed drops to zero. So this really is for the rogue who is locked toe-to-toe -to -toe in melee with their foe, mm -hmm. or the rogue who is sort of and you know safely yeah. ensconced in some sniper position. Right. Uh, and also for the rogue who is in a group maybe where there are no melee combatants to help set sneak attack up. Yeah. Uh, many rogues are actually going to have no need for this because many rogues are in groups that have a fighter or a barbarian or somebody else who is setting up yeah. sneak attack for them round after round after round. This is really for that rogue who doesn't have a melee buddy they're in fights where there's nowhere to hide. Yeah. But by golly, they would really love to be able to use their sneak attack. And if anyone's wondering, oh my goodness, is this overpowered? No, it is not. The rogue is actually designed assuming they are using their sneak attack almost every single time yeah. they take a turn in combat. It's the key, fe well, it's like one of the key features of being a rogue. And yeah, if, if, you're, not, if you're, you're going to have a friend within five feet, like. Well, but again, if you don't, and there's no place to hide, exactly. this aim option gives you a way yeah. uh, to, to use your sneak attack. We also had other intents for this. The rogue is designed in many ways to be the agile action hero. And of all of our classes, the rogue is the person who, let's say you knock them prone. Yeah. And normally when you're knocked prone, your attacks have disadvantage. The rogue of all people should be able to line up a shot while laying on the ground with their hand crossbow and oh. fire, being able to aim to wipe their disadvantage away oh, from being wow. prone. So this, this option, you know, it's one option, but its applications are extremely uh, powerful and, I and appealing. That. I love that. It's like a, being a wolverine. But yeah, the, the term, um, uh, the saying, uh, a knife fight in a phone booth comes to mind. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like this, the rogue, that's the rogue, that's what the rogue should be good at is that kind of situation. Yeah. You, um, so you, you do all these wonderful things for um, rangers and fighters, and I'm very excited about both, and I'm strongly considering playing a fighter now. Um, you just keep on giving goodness to the warlocks, which, you know, I like warlocks. <laughs> there's a lot of juicy goodness with the warlocks. And there's a theme in this UA to a certain degree of helping. And I'm seeing this more and more in your design, helping everyone else. You've got a, now you have a talisman. Mm -hmm. And you, primarily the function of this talisman for a warlock is to help somebody else, to help them with skill checks or... War, well, now the warlock can use the talisman just to help themselves, yeah. but it is true that its full potential is unlocked when you give it to somebody else. Right. And this arose when we were looking at the pack boon options that are already in the game, and people have let us know, can you know, we at least have another option, uh, you know, because even though people love Pact of the Blade and Pact of the Chain and Pact of the Tome, it was like, maybe another one. So we had fun creating the talisman. We're never going to stop asking for Oh, more. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, but it, it was not interesting to us 
to design something that is essentially just like the others, yeah. but with a different uh, with a different aesthetic. I wanted this to be functionally different in some way, to speak to a different play experience, so that also warlocks felt like they had more options. Uh, that you know, if if you want to go the sort of full spellcaster route, you can often take Pact of the Tome. If you really like the notion of having a little critter uh, who is helping you out, whether it's a little fiendish critter or a fey critter or you know something else. Well, Pact of the Chain is great. And if you really love the kind of warrior mage kind of aesthetic, well, you can get Pact of the Blade. Yeah. What the warlock was really missing was the more sort of support warlock, a person who has made a pact, but not necessarily for selfish reasons, uh, and who might be using this magic, whatever its origin, uh, to help not only themselves, but others. And so the talisman is, is a way to do that. That said, we even provided some support options also for the Tome Warlock by giving you the ability to like uh, save a friend from death by oh. having them sign their name in your Book of Shadows because we wanted to do a little, some more flavorful things with the Book of Shadows uh, when we were doing this Unearthed Arcana. I love that. It's almost the opposite of the Book of Death. Uh, if you if you are a fan of the Death Note series, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, like to write your friend's name down and that mm -hmm. will save them once. Yep. Um, yeah, is lovely and and so narrative. It makes the Book of Shadows like way more interesting to me now. Yeah. Um, the other one I I am totally in love with is the, the one where you can cast Sending. Tell me about that because that is such such rich narrative flavor. Yeah. So uh, here you can. Again, if, if someone has signed their name on the special page in your Book of Shadows that has to do with this communication, uh, you can communicate with them wherever they are in the world, uh, and you write the message on that page, yeah. and they hear it mentally, and then they can mentally respond, and their message appears on the page. Uh -huh. uh, and again, it's just the warlock is such a fertile ground when it comes to this kind of flavor. Yeah. Uh, always fun to design for. Uh, and also there are some more invocations as well right. uh, in this UA, uh, some of which are for uh, the talisman. Uh, again, uh, there are the, the ones we've just been talking about for uh, the tome. Uh, and then we even have one for uh, Pact of the Blade, yes. which is the... Very interesting. Yes, in, in, <laughs> instantly don a suit of armor and be proficient with it. Yeah, you got that little bit of that Iron Man thing going on. What's interesting about it to me is, because you know everyone thinks Hexblade, but Hexblade is, because I played a Hexblade that was like eight strength, so I had a very wispy, skinny, Vincent Price man who could mm -hmm. like carry um, a Final Fantasy-sized you know, JRPG sword. Right. Because <laughs> well, you get to use your charisma modifier. But, so Eldritch Armor, as an invocation, you touch a ar piece of armor, any armor, mm -hmm. and you're prof proficient with it. That means plate mail. But plate mail has a strength re it requirement. Sure so now you, I see that as an advantage of like, maybe you want to play a big buff warlock. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yep. You know? Yeah, so you, it, it's just, it's providing more options. Yeah. Uh, and that, that is, again, what this uh, Unearthed Arcana is all about. Uh, new fighting styles also appear for the fighter, the ranger, and the paladin. Unarmed is very interesting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because people have, people have told us they'd love to have a character who is very effective with unarmed fighting without necessarily being a monk, because yeah. uh, you know, the monk is our premier unarmed fighter. Uh, but we decided we would you know, give an option uh, for paladins, rangers, and fighters. Uh, we also give rangers and paladins the option to essentially not take a regular fighting style and instead learn cantrips uh, because some rangers and paladins really want to delve deeper into the magical side of their class and this gives them that option. The extended spell list also, again, there's this thing. The talisman has this very, like, help your party feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, now the Book of Shadows has this same thing. You're helping with communication. Mm -hmm. You're helping 
flat out save a life by having their name in there. And this is the character I tend to like to play, but I don't want to play a paladin, right? And now you're giving me the option to be the warlock that actually cares, or is trying to help the party, mm -hmm. or has a loved one that he wants to make sure is always safe. Mm -hmm. um, Ranger now has warding bond. I thought that was very interesting because you could be a ranger who is just shooting arrows, but someone out there, you're now currently protecting. Yeah, and we we included several buffing spells on the expanded ranger list for several reasons. One, I love the classic concept of the ranger going all the way back to first edition of the ranger essentially being to the druid what the paladin is to the cleric. Yeah. And I think you and I have talked about before, the ranger originally had to be good. Uh, there, yes. in, in first edition D&D, &D, there was no such thing as evil rangers. Oh yeah, uh, I was it, a neutral good ranger. Uh, I, I showed you my original character sheet. Yeah. I had wonderful penmanship for an eight-year-old. And, and, <laughs> and so I, I always love it when we have a chance to lean into the ranger, not just as the person who's, who's roaming through the wilds, but is roaming with a purpose, the roaming to protect, yeah. the, not only uh, the natural world, but also the people who travel through it and the people who reside there. These buffing abilities are also there for the Beastmaster. Yeah. Uh, warding Bond is actually a way for the Beastmaster to protect uh, their companion. Yes. Uh, and <laughs> it is also a nice option for any ranger who might use the animal friendship spell to befriend an animal and then have that animal as an NPC companion. Right. So some of these additions sort of uh, are achieving multiple goals for us. There's, the, again, the broader narrative of the ranger as this uh, nature-flavored protector, uh, but then also helping rangers who have beasts who are traveling with them and they want to give those beasts a chance to survive. That's what I love about this UA, and and all all the UAs that have been coming out is like there, there is some great juicy strategy that you are introducing into the game, but they have narrative and role playing consequence at the same time. You are getting all of it at the same time. Like giving Ranger warding bond has so many implications that you just mentioned, and it's lovely. I mean. Um, you also have the talisman has an ability, if, if you're a warlock and you use that and you give it to maybe a fighter, not a spellcaster, you, you, they attack that person who's wearing the talisman and they can get shocked for psychic damage yep. and then knocked back 10 feet. If yep. you're putting that on a barbarian, I mean, that's just a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> like you're just making him even more of a tank. Yeah. And uh, it's more of this, this uh, players working together to like, you know, form this cohesive group. And I, I adore all of it. It's, it's so flavorful and fun and, and, and leads you down like a much more role-playing path. And that, that interaction between characters, those role-playing options, also are behind the options that we've provided in The Bard and the Barbarian. Uh, the Bard now has an option to enhance spellcasters' spells with bardic inspiration. Because yeah. baseline bardic inspiration isn't really doing anything for a spell that doesn't involve an attack roll. And so this provides an option for the bard to assist their, say, their wizard friend or their cleric friend or somebody who's primarily casting spells uh, that don't involve uh, attack rolls in combat. The barbarian really gets a role-playing option for one of their features, which is the ability to get rid of danger sense to instead become an expert in a couple of skills, allowing the barbarian player to lean more into uh, a barbarian who maybe is more than their rage. Yes. Uh, and, and I know most of us who, who like playing barbarians, and I love playing a barbarian, uh, are all about and, and love that they're rage machines, but also sometimes a person wants another concept. And so that's here. Uh, similarly with the uh, optional replacement of fast movement, this is giving the barbarian a chance to interact with a tactical situation 
in a way they can't with just a straight speed boost. We know not everyone is going to want this. Uh, it is the, the nature of the replacements in this unearthed arcana uh, that people are going to, in some cases, want to keep what's in the player's handbook. That's fine. We designed them that way. Right. We designed them so that you could have a person at your table who's using the player's handbook version of a feature next to a person using the replacement version of that same feature, and they're both going to perform well. Uh, again, that's part of these replacements. They are not like once and for all replacing what's in the PH. Yeah. It's a new option. Uh, and as is, again, this entire buffet that we've been talking about. Is there anything that came out of this that is like a particular favorite of yours? Personally, or are you not allowed to play favorites? Uh, so I, I am so often the parent who loves all their children, yeah. and so there is stuff I love uh, in every single one of these classes. Uh, and I mean, we have been we have been working on these for quite a while, tinkering with them, revising them, deleting. I mean, there are actually a lot of things that that died on the cutting room floor, um, and that's that's the nature of design. Uh, and so this set of options that we've presented, uh, honestly, if I had the time, I would love to play a character who, you know, gets to enjoy using every one of these enhancements or replacements. Yeah. What do you think that, have you already seen, started to see feed, feedback? Because this is a big UA. This is so, like an event UA. So, so far, <laughs> people have been very excited by it. And... I'm looking forward to getting the survey feedback so that we can dig in. My hope is that people love them enough so that we can take these to the next level. Uh, because again, just as a DM and as a player, I would love to see these uh, as a part of DM's toolkits. That when, they, when they're creating a campaign and they're considering you know, what's going to be special about this campaign? What options are available in this campaign? I think this set of options are just going to be another great tool for DMs to consider, particularly to ease pain points, to bring new smiles to people's faces about characters that, you know, they might have been like, I've been there, done that with uh, clerics or, you know, bards or rangers, but now suddenly see these new options. It's like, well, I thought I, I thought I was done playing that class, but now I'm all about it. Uh, so it really, it, it, I'm hoping these will bring fresh excitement uh, for people to these, about these classes that they already love.